um, I'm not sure if you guys saw like the MLB, like the Dodgers night with uh, and well, originally they had invited the but where the the sister I always forget how to say it, sisters sisters of perpetual indulgence. Yeah. Then they rescinded the invite because people were up in arms about it. But then now they re-invited them and it's still kind of shuffling and bustling. But it looks like the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence are they're going to at least accept it. They put out a statement saying that they met with the team. They, you know, kind of hash it out and said, okay, you know what? We appreciate you realizing <laughs> the situation at hand and they're going to show up. But, but now there's star players on that team speaking up against it. There's star players like on other MLB teams saying <sighs> that they think that that group is against Christianity and all this stuff. And it's like, y'all just need to go have several seats and sit down because <laughs> y'all all know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Close your porn hub. Take a seat. <laughs> period <laughs> so shout out to them because i mean hopefully this is a, a learning lesson for a lot of businesses right now because we saw it with bud light we're seeing it with legos right now target. it's like, gonna get worse a lot it gets better, of for target sure. yeah yeah um but it also shows at least for our community we could us speaking up and showing up and speaking out can potentially change things um, like the Dodger situation. So continue to do so in that regard. Um, my modeling geez. agency had me booked for several pride campaigns last year for large companies. And this year I expected to do them again. And I don't think the companies are doing them because they're scared. That's sad to me. That's ridiculous. <sighs> So, I mean, we just got, I mean, we just got to continue to speak up, speak out. Like that's what pride month is for. Honestly, we, we, they continue to the fight. Yes. We love a little key key moment. We love a little, you know, le- rooftop moment, party moment, parade moment. But if we've seen anything the last few years, pride month means we need to turn up and turn out because they're, they're really trying to diminish um, our community right now. So what now is the situation like? Fight. What is the situation like in Canada for drag queens? Are you seeing similar, um, you know, conservative uh, folks coming out with similar we, kinds of legislation? We are, yeah, yeah. I would say was mirroring what's happening there. Threats on the facilities that are hosting events, like like book readings, um, and then mm-hmm. you're, I'm seeing my friends who have kids protesting by bringing their kids to drag uh queen event um i'm participating in one that my mom and her best friend are running for trans youth in my hometown and we are having like 12 queens come and they're shutting down the street and so it is going to be chaotic i know there's going to be protesters there um so yeah i it's mirroring what's happening there and uh our brands are scared to mention pride now and um yeah the queens are scared and what happens there eventually happens here all the time yeah it's interesting Mm -hmm. because like for the longest we were wondering if corporations especially large corporations were appropriating pride month and things like that And, and and going through like situations now i'm like in a way, go ahead and appropriate us. Like at least we're visible. At least it's forcing the narrative a little more and to see things being rolled back. is scary. Honestly, it's scary. Like to go into a target of all places to and be like, wait, I can't even buy a pride shirt. I can't buy a pride pin. Like that's, that's weird. That's crazy to me. So in a weird way, I'm like, okay, maybe, maybe my viewpoint was a little jaded, a little naive, maybe. Uh, to just be like, oh, we've gotten too corporate. No, you know what? It, it was good. We need the corporate stance, honestly. Yeah, I feel, uh, yeah, I was thinking that as well. Just that year, I made all those memes making fun of corporations. And this year, we're like, that she has a model, like, please hire us. <laughs> we're just kidding. <laughs> uh, last I honestly, year, I was like, I honestly um, feel like, yeah. Uh, sorry, I, I just, I honestly feel like um, I've never really had an issue with like, appropriating pride but i think the question of it is is like when you're profiting off of marginalized communities you 
it's easy to see who does that when situations like this get tough because there are other companies yeah. where when when shit got tough and people were do like protesting and going into their their retail stores or whatever and saying things against employees and whatnot the company stood by them but target yeah. target you ain't doing it so You're it so truly shows it shows wh what your colors are when you you like then really what you were using this as a marketing ploy is not that you stand by and it's it sucks because i know that there are so many gay people lgbtqia plus people who look at target and shop at target and spend and their hard earned dollars because they believe and, and work, work there right. and believe that 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 company has their back and they don't because when shit gets tough they fold up like you know, they do whatever the shareholders I don't have another analogy, but they fold not, up, you know, and it's, and it's, and yeah. now we know what your true colors are because you're not willing to, you're willing to ride with it as long as it's cool. And as long as you can make money off of it. But as soon as things are getting, starts getting tough and you have to stand on your morals, we see what your morals are and your morals aren't there. And that's, that's disappointing. But I want to know. So now I know I never stopped there and I will never. So it's fine. <laughs> yeah. RJ, yeah. Yeah. buy local. Yeah. What is your what is the equivalent of uh, Target in um, in Canada? Is there? Uh, well, we had a tar we had Target for two years. They came here and they shut down. Um, Y'all ran them out of the country. Guess, <laughs> said, no, thank you. Here. That cheap ass shit. <laughs> um, I guess Walmart and as a Walmart oh. ambassador, I love Walmart. Oh. <laughs> Yay, Walmart. <I> <laughs> we do too. Minority Report. You want to sponsor us, Walmart? <laughs> Amazon is the best. I love Amazon, and you can catch me at Amazon Pride next week. Hey, there we go now. <laughs> <laughs> I love Amazon. I'm a fashion ambassador for them. I know that's right. Let's I make things, right. Get them lots of cool. things and ship it and have people running around the little warehouse <laughs> really quick. <laughs> good for their heart right <laughs> it's a heart it's a heart healthy company <laughs> yeah. i lost 20 pounds in my first week at amazon <laughs> uh, i'm not gonna say anything because i don't want to oh, mess anybody's checkup <laughs> this is right right and our future checks either we're putting it out there amazon you want to sponsor us too go right on ahead come on now boo <laughs> How do we then? How do we maybe tie pride into like the target stuff? Mm. <laughs> Not pride of target. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not bad at it. <laughs> you? I mean, okay, let's do it. Not proud of target. I'm not bad at it. <laughs> Not proud of Target, not proud of Bud Light, not nope. proud of who else, the Dodgers, not proud of. <laughs> uh -uh. Target didn't piss me all the way off. That whole, that whole. Mm -hmm. I know. Like, it, we had a, we had you a know conversation. What's really sad about it, too. Mm. Go ahead. No, go, go, go. Oh, because it's just like, it's the vendors. Like, it, like just because like that's the world i work in so it's just like going like you literally take all these years to try to get into a target it's impossible mm -hmm. to get into these retailers mm -hmm. yeah and so you work your ass off to get your shit in there you're proud of that like you're like finally i get in that and then this happens mm -hmm. and it's like a kick in the gut Yep. And it's just like, we don't work our ass off to get into these retailers that are impossible to get into. And this shit happens to us. And it's just the torn emotions of it all. And the bottom line of your profit, because you already built this into your forecast for the year. Right. <laughs> right. So it's just like, it's fucked up on so many regards. Like it's and, upsetting. <laughs> but you know, and a lot of companies, we, we, we have, um, we have, We've scheduled so many meetings with our internal comms team, our PR teams, with us, the diversity and inclusion group, you know, our CEO, our chief people officer, our legal teams, because now we have to go into crisis planning mode around this. Like I just had a meeting today with our social media team, um, the gal that does the social media for us, 
because she runs by all of the what we call heritage events so that's all of the you know like pride it's like black history month there's anything that's connected to yep. these communities and she runs all of those um those comms and those social media posts to me to make sure that it's as inclusive and da 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 da, da. and so we were literally just having this yep. whole conversation about you know like we have to be ready for any kind of backlash that we that we that we that we will likely get because we are promoting um pride month so yeah. we have to go into crisis planning mode because we're not doubling down like which one of the things i'm so proud of is is you know we are the stuff that we say we do you know so when it yeah. when we stand behind a community you know we stand behind that community and so you know we've been an ally of pride for a long time we've invested millions of dollars into pride related activities around the globe every single year um and supporting our employees and we promote and we engage on, around that stuff so we're it's it's just sad like it breaks my heart for anybody that works for target that believed that target was uh, for them and then this shit happens yeah. and you're like Oh, so you yeah, really was wasn't that really about too. that. <laughs> yeah. That's, I mean, imagine as an employee going through that, like you, now you realize that the company that you've been working for ain't shit. Yeah. And, 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 the, and the hard thing too <laughs> is like anymore, like you have to act so quickly to shit and mm -hmm. And even though I, I would like to think to, and believe that the reason why they pulled back for some of their stores was truly the protection of the the LGBT communities in those stores, which I, I do agree. Like these people are out here crazy right now. But is that the right? Is that the right way to protect it ain't somebody? The right move. And nope. that's where just you know, right. And it's just like that's the conversations clearly that they just don't have the right people high up enough yep. to tell you, no, that's not the way to, to protect yeah. people in a store. The right way to protect people in the store is increase that security. Yep. You see people in there acting crazy, get kicked their ass and you out. Have, and you have signage that clearly states yes. that, you know, any disruptive activity that is not shopping related, you will be ex excommunicated from the target community target, forever all the targets like, you, you know what i mean like so at any rate and not proud of target so get your cups ready for minority report there we go i had to throw some of them little shady eyes in that last one <laughs> that part 